Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Deering, and I'm the Managing Director of the Society to Preserve the Millville Murals of Moxavanka. This year is the 30th anniversary of the Vanka Society, an independent nonprofit organization working to save and share the murals painted by immigrant artists Max Ovanka and St. Nicholas Croatian Catholic Church in Millville in 1937 and 1941. If you're just discovering the murals through this program, I hope you'll continue the introduction at our website, vankamurals.org, and visit us soon. We are open for in-person tours on Saturdays at 11 and for private tours at other times. Tonight's table talk, Disrespecting the Border, is presented in partnership with Hiccup, Hemispheric Conversations Urban Art Project. This is the first in a series entitled Other Voices, Other Walls. Through these programs, we're excited to learn from, raise awareness about, and collaborate with individuals and organizations building dialogue around critical issues of the day through art. Questions like those that are helping us to deepen and diversify our interpretation of the Vanka murals. How can art move and inspire people and foster positive change? What do justice and injustice look like in our world today? How do we make history and how do we build community? There are two more programs in this series coming up on February 8th and March 23rd. You're on the invitation list now, so we hope you'll join us again. Now, before I turn it over to Dr. Bruce, a few housekeeping items. We will have time for Q&A after the presentation, but you can send questions during the discussion time uh, using the Q&A function here. So uh, put your questions in there as they occur to you. You can upvote questions. So um, bring certain questions to the top and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as possible. You may also chat directly to the hosts and uh, the panelists if you prefer. So thank you again for being with us. And I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Caitlin Bruce, Assistant Professor of Communication at the University of Pittsburgh. She'll be our moderator for tonight and I'll let her uh, have the pleasure of introducing Hiccup more and uh, introducing our panelists. So thank you again for being here and enjoy. Thank you, Anna. And um, here we are. Welcome everyone. This is a real pleasure and I'm so thrilled uh, to have you with us tonight, especially on a weekday, over 40 people. It's really exciting. Um, I'm Caitlin Bruce. I am Associate Professor of Communication and a Program Coordinator for Hemispheric Conversations Urban Art Project. This is a collaborative that's funded by the University of Pittsburgh and it's founded by myself, Orion Cohen, Shane Pilster, and Ron with Max Gonzalez. The goal of Hiccup is fomenting conversations across borders and through cultures with a focus on public art. We focus specifically on muralism, graffiti, and street art because these movements have been vehicles for youth voice, activism, post-industrial aesthetics, and global solidarity, and they generate spaces for encounter. We've been focused on partnerships between Chicago, Mexico City, and Leon, Guanajuato, and we've produced murals and held workshops in Millville and brought visiting artists and residents to see the Vanka murals over the last five years. So it's a real privilege to help curate this conversation. Um, you can find more information about our organization at our website, hcuap.com, which I'll also put in the chat. And we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, which is just at Hiccup. So our programming combines uh, foci on youth street art workshops, artist residencies and mural production, but also public conversations like this one, because we're really interested in the way that art brings folks together, allows us to discuss larger issues, and allows us to think about the relationship between the past and present and here and elsewhere. So I'm really thrilled to be able to start our 2021 programming with a discussion about Disrespecting the Border, a project that encapsulates the power of collaborative art making to create new connections, visualize stories, and energize the imagination of new possibilities through critical and engaging aesthetics. And if you enjoyed the conversation tonight, I invite you to join us on February 8th for another conversation about the Golden Cage project that's uh, curated by Artist Image Resource. So I'm just going to provide the bios of our illustrious, illustrious panelists, um, and then they're going to give a presentation. I just have one question for them after the presentation, and then we're going to open it up to the audience. So we're hoping to leave a lot of time for dialogue and conversation together. So 
Gil Rocha is an artist and teacher who lives and works in his hometown of Laredo, Texas. He's exhibited his artwork across Mexico and the United States and recently had a solo show at Presa House Gallery in San Antonio. He teaches at art at the Vidal M. Trevino School of Communications and Fine Arts, which is the city's magnet high school for the arts. Leah Pat Gorski is an artist and designer in Pittsburgh whose studio work is centered around naturally derived textiles and colors. Leah is part of a collective with two other women as the Other Border Wall Project, an ongoing creative re resistance against harmful border practices and xenophobia. Other Border Wall traveled to Laredo, Texas in 2018, and this is what helped to pave the way for inviting Gil to Pittsburgh for the mural workshop that you're gonna learn about tonight. Camilo Ruiz will soon obtain a PhD in anthropology and a master's in public health from the University of Pittsburgh. His research focuses on new shapes of the HIV and opioid epidemics in the Americas and the Latinx migration into non-traditional settlements in the United States. He often uses community-based participatory methods throughout his research, and he's a co-director of the Disrespecting the Border Project. And Marisol Vieja is a third year PhD student in the Department of History of Art and Architecture at Pitt, where she works on public art. Her historical research looks at the artistic exchanges between China and Latin America during the Cold War, focusing on muralism and prints. She collaborates in interdisciplinary projects that connect the arts, academia, and the community. And so we're going to start with a presentation where they tell us about this project's origins and process, as well as some of the directions it's going into the future. So I'm going to turn it over to Camilo and Marisol and Gil and Leah. Thank you. Well, good night, everybody. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you for the Max Ubanka uh, organization to invite us. And thank you, Caitlin, for organizing this event. And well, I want to invite Leah and Gil to turn on their, uh, their cameras so we can see you. And I'm gonna, we did uh, a presentation that I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna share the screen and I think uh, uh, our faces are gonna disappear. Can we look and hear me? Yes. Okay, it says uh, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. I don't know if there's something that I need to click aside from that. I saw the same message. Yeah, I think you're able now. Okay. There you go. Hi everyone. Hello. Good evening, everyone. So, well, let's let's roll it. <clears throat> so, um, well, this is a, a, a panoramic of the mural uh, in uh, its previous location. It's an art gallery located here in Pittsburgh, and it was there. Uh, for almost a year, I think, uh, uh, because the pandemic obliged the mural to stay there <laughs> on its own. But we will show you where it is now. Um, but we want to tell you a little bit about the history of this project. And this started uh, through a conversation that we had with Leah uh, a couple of years ago. So how was it, Leah? Do you remember? Uh, I do. Yeah, we were, we had kind of talked about this here and there casually. Um, we were both involved with different ways about um, creative projects uh, that were kind of uh, against uh, the border wall and also um, working, Camilo had these projects, uh, public art projects working with immigrants in Pittsburgh. And I had become part of this collective with two other artists, um, the other border wall project. And so we had talked a little bit about how these things might intersect. And, um, and one day we were like, let's do a community art project. <laughs> it was kind of that clear at some point. And, um, and on that same lunch day, we called up Gil I remember calling him on the phone and we said like, Gil, would you be interested in coming up to our cold Northern city and, uh, and doing something? 
Um, and, and on that day too, we, we talk about the title and, um, and we came up with disrespecting the border because we were, we were talking about something that um, the idea of things that don't respect the border, um, things that don't respect the geographic borders like uh, weather and animals and um, I remember Gil had said something about asado smoke on the Super Bowl <laughs> and um, so that kind of spirit of like all the things that don't respect borders was kind of behind our our initial ideas. Yeah I also remember that um, well there was of course uh, a, a momentum in the last uh, presidency in which the the world gained this uh, like big uh, re uh, thing right and and even though like Pittsburgh is geographically far away from the U.S. Mexico border politically and culturally it is not there is there are like the Latinx community is growing and is growing fast in Pittsburgh and many of uh, members of that community are working class people who have crossed that border in various ways. So we wanted also to, to speak about it. And, and also um, there are like detention centers in Pennsylvania where immigrants are being held just for uh, being immigrants without documents. And also in Pittsburgh, there is a, a place where uh, immig young immigrants kids are uh, who are seeking asylum are uh, uh, temporarily living there while they, they get like into uh, houses or their family members or friends who are willing to kind of host them. So Pittsburgh is, a, and as, as the rest of the US is deeply connected with, with the, the US-Mexico border. And we wanted to, to also speak to that, but also like dignify and also dignify the, the Latinx presence of uh, uh, here in Pittsburgh. Um, so what we did is um, we decided uh, at that moment, the University of Pittsburgh had a, this is small grants uh, framed under the idea of the year of creativity. A, a very a diverse group of professors and students and artists and local art artists from Pittsburgh we gathered and put together, put a, a proposal together and we got uh, $5,000, uh, I remember that. And uh, we decided to invite people. We wanted to make uh, a mural, uh, uh, but the idea was to make a, a community mural. So we started to invite people. We made these flyers in English and Spanish and we were all around the city to different places inviting people to this project. And the idea was to uh, get together over a long weekend. Uh, we managed to find um, a warehouse in, in, in the, in Gist Street, Gist Street in Uptown. There is this uh, street where there are some uh, artists and friends live. And they lent us uh, this uh, very nice warehouse where we could like set up the whole thing and work for a, for a long weekend. And uh, we convinced 20 people to participate in this mural. Uh, people from different nationalities, seven different nationalities. The age range was from seven to 50. Uh, different uh, professions uh, from constructors to uh, professors at bid. So, uh, and yeah, we, we basically uh, uh, had a lot of fun and came up with uh, this mural, uh, which uh, uh, I think Gil is gonna explain you more in detail how this happened uh, because he was uh, our, our artistic guide in this process. Okay, well, thank you guys. Uh, to be honest, I'm quite excited and honored to be invited and you know, thank you for, for having me here and uh, giving me the opportunity to present this project um, right now. I mean, I totally forgot even about getting paid Camilo because I mean, this stuff, uh, those I think were the best spent $5,000 that the university must have used because this is an ongoing project and it just keeps expanding and expanding. Uh, 
So yes, Camilo and uh, Leah, I remember getting the phone call and they invited me to, to participate in, in this mural workshop. And as a teacher and as a muralist and you know, as an artist, I was very excited to, uh, to share my, my skills with other people, with the community. And I wasn't sure as to what to expect. So the idea was to do this three-day project. Uh, and the first uh, meeting that we had uh, was on a, a Friday. And so we met in the evening in this warehouse uh, where I presented my work, where I presented myself and kind of the idea that I had for us to work with. Uh, we initially had thought about doing it on an actual wall, but because of weather and other logistics, we decided eventually to, uh, to do it on panels. And so uh, that's what I explained that night uh, after explaining my work, uh, the process that we would be going through. And so we started just brainstorming and I posted uh, you know, uh, my idea to the public to think about things that, would, that they would like to see uh, in a mural uh, that they would think that are personally important. And so uh, we had this big shock work and we just started writing down ideas. Uh, people were welcome to draw uh, themselves up there. Uh, we had, like I said, or Camilo said, uh, you know, uh, a group of people, but then the following morning, other people showed up and it was just kind of like in transition, people coming in and out. So uh, the idea was to create this mural and eventually we set up in the, uh, into creating something uh, at the time, uh, I guess I played a big part of the influence in the direction of the mural. And um, one of the things that I had in mind for my personal work, was uh, having, or the idea of carrying things. Uh, we all tend to carry things in our pockets and we carry things in bags and backpacks. Uh, and not only physically, but, but we also carry a lot of emotional things, maybe things in our minds. Um, and so that was kind of what, how it started. And so people started, um, you know, throwing ideas like, uh, you know, carrying, a, plants or carrying a book. And so together we decided, you know what, we're gonna make like this cart where it'll be uh, kind of a, a representation of migrating, of just adding and taking away things. So we just created this sort of um, transformer, uh, very organic looking uh, cart with a lot of the stuff that people had mentioned, like we, I said, like books or even little sayings. Um, and so after sketching the idea and kind of all of us agreeing that, you know, that was the right direction on Saturday, maybe like midday, that's when, uh, we sketched the, the drawing. And then we had, since we had different levels of, I guess, of artists, uh, participating, uh, we let the people, let's say with a little bit less skill participate by filling in, uh, the mural. And so they got to do that part. And then, you know, another group of people would come in to do uh, the more detailed and refined uh, part of the mural, including myself. And so, um, and there, like I said, people were coming in and out. So it was like a transitional mural. And, and I don't know, like during that process, I guess by like Saturday uh, afternoon, after sitting down, we had lunch together after talking about, you know, uh, how we were doing with the mural. And we started sharing our stories where we came from, starting knowing each other a little bit better. Uh, I think that's where the dynamic of the group kind of like became like a glue. Uh, uh, we found that, you know, even though that all of us are coming from different places, we shared a lot of the uh, of common things and uh, including like, uh, like the struggles or why we're there, like the fight in each of us of, of uh, being in, in Pittsburgh at that time. And so that kind of just made it even more communal. Uh, and, and it was just so much fun. I mean, we kept painting and switching and uh, just participating. And so this is, I think like maybe Saturday, uh, like around four or five in the afternoon. Um, go ahead. And uh, eventually we ended up finishing the mural, I think on Sunday, uh, late night. 
Uh, I was the very last one to kind of put the final details. And like I said, uh, when we think to uh, when we think about murals, uh, we often think of you know a lot of images, or maybe we have a certain idea. But in this case, because of the time that we had and uh, the level of, of different community members participating, uh, like technically, I kind of my focus as the teacher or the or the guide in, in this project was that we need to do something where everybody gets involved uh, and we can finish within the given time. And so it's uh, the general, uh, I guess the, the scene, it doesn't have much of a background, but I think the content itself uh, really spoke to all of us that were involved and has been, you know, kind of expanding. And so now here we are, uh, you know, uh, talking about not only the, this mural with the bank of murals and uh, maybe we can talk about the relationship of like, uh, like moving or migrating and how, and how that has, you know, things in common and how it differs, uh, whether in the imagery and also in, in the content. Okay. Camilo, yeah. did, Camilo, Camilo did you want to? Camila, did you want to say something about the uh, the sort of media attention? Yeah, well, so as as uh, so one specific point or one important point about this project, as I, as I was saying earlier, is that or was that we wanted to highlight the the Latinx presence in, in Pittsburgh, right? And uh, the mural uh, per se uh, is thought to be part of those other public murals that the city has, no? That Pittsburgh has all these like beautiful murals around the city, but very few uh, speak to, to a Latinx presence. So a mural itself was going to do that, but also it was important to tell the media that. We learned that with other projects that letting know the media that these uh, processes are happening are very important, not only to attract people, but also to leave public records of, of these events, right? The mural might disappear eventually, but the, the memory of the newspaper is gonna be there. So we thought that that was important and uh, the Pittsburgh city, uh, city paper uh, 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 did uh, a piece for us. Uh, and I think uh, there are little pieces in, in other places, uh, uh, blogs, and I think the his, uh, Department of uh, History of Art and Architecture at Pitt did a little piece on, on, the, on the mural. So that's part of like uh, the exercise of creating like uh, memories for the project. Uh, then we had the uh, first exhibition uh, at the Unblurred, right? Uh, yeah, I, I could say a little bit about that. Um, again, it was important for us to share our work with the public. Um, and after some asking around, we we're able to match up with this space, which is um, 5120 Penn Avenue. Uh, the catch was that the space was not heated, um, but you can see plenty of people came by anyway, uh, I think. It helped that the bright colors of uh, the painting were super visible from the street. Um, and it was, it was nice. I remember on this night um, hearing people coming up with their own interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, I remember this one woman who she said she was Turkish and she she keyed in on the strands, like the strings holding the pieces together and said it reminded her of how you try to keep the connection to home, but it's, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and uh, well, I, I also wanted to, to tell you that through all the process we had food and we tried to incorporate uh, Latinx food. So we got food from restaurants, uh, well, actually a Brazilian restaurant in the city and we had that and that was also key in, in, in well, in the workshop, but also in this first opening. Um, 
And yeah, as I told you before, the, the mural had to live there for a while. But what is also pretty cool about the mural is that it is a mural that you can move. And what we thought at the beginning was uh, kind of a weakness or we didn't want to do that became more and more important and uh, like a key aspect of the mural itself self that talks about migration too. Um, yeah, and then we got a, a very prestigious prize thanks to Marisol. Thank you, Leah and Jill and Camilo for reviving all these memories. It's um, amazing to go back in time and I enjoy again, like reviving it and living it again. So um, I also got involved in this project from, from the beginning and I met Leah and Camilo uh, my first year here in Pittsburgh and I was thrilled to join them, especially because that expanded my, my research. I came to Pittsburgh to do a very specific uh, uh, research so being able to connect with um, with a project here in Pittsburgh and with people in Pittsburgh made a lot made a lot a lot of sense to me, and I just keep learning about this. And a year ago, around this time, uh, Camilo and I had the chance to present uh, this project to the uh, Department of History of Art and Architecture at Pitt, and we had a lot of uh, good feedback about it. And it eventually, also received a, a prize, the Mastering Prize for Outstanding Work in the Public Humanities which recognizes curatorial work that is dedicated to inclusiveness and community outreach. So yeah, yeah, we made it. <laughs> and that, um, so that prize helped a lot to continue with the process and, and we have used uh, that money to continue um, um, publicizing the, 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 the project and we created a website. We hire a professional photographer to take uh, photos of it and and to continue with this documentation uh, of the project that Camilo was talking about. And, and then we also uh, created a, a, a way to exhibit the mural. And right now uh, we can see it um, in Hill Library, in the Hillman Library at Pitt. Um, we'll see some images about that. Ah, uh, yeah, here, Camilo can talk about the installation because you were really involved with that. <laughs> Yeah, so so the the Hillman Library has renewed the second floor, and now it's like a very cool um, space where they're like since the beginning they were planning to bring a, a, a temporary art exhibitions, and when the university learned about the project, they invited us to to bring the mural there. And, and then in the picture, you see Felipe, who is a friend of the project, who has been super handy in all the process of getting the, the materials and helping us think how to better put uh, the mural. And for example, one important thing uh, is that the, the thing or the materiality of the, or the material that was used to, to make the mural is fiberglass. And we got this fiberglass in this like secondhand store in Braddock that many of you might know. It has like a big a hat with the black and yellow on top. Um, and going there by itself, it, it was a whole experience. And, and as you can see, Felipe is cutting uh, a part of this uh, a slide or this sheet of the mural which I wanted to, or we wanted to show this, this picture because to show you what is it made of, but also how light it is. But also we talked with some artists here in Pittsburgh that have done similar murals and they told us that the material is perfect for the, uh, for example, the weather of Pittsburgh. So it's it, 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 like rain won't affect it for decades. So, so it's a good material, it will last. Uh, and again, it's, it's light. So if you want to visit the mural, you can go to Hillman and it is uh, in the second floor uh, and it's right there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, it's on the third floor. Oh yeah, third floor, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it is right there and I think it's gonna be there for a, a few months. So you are all invited to, to visit the mural. Uh, and Hillman, which is, uh, I love that library and it's a great library. And so here we, uh, we think that uh, of course, uh, as uh, we know that many people in the public are a uh, Vanka fans and Vanka uh, art experts. 
and and uh, we thought that uh, 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 I mean we didn't want to compare like the quality of art is pretty these things are pretty different. But I think there is a, a, a big and deep connection about migration, right? Like, uh, and we all have visited, probably uh, Gil did not visit Van murals when we were here, but, but you've seen the art. And we thought that the, the main bridge that, that these murals could, uh, or the main dialogue could be around a uh, migration. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we wanted to, I don't know, we thought that we could explain you in more detail with these snippets, why migration is important for our mural and maybe in the Q&A or now we can think about how to connect it with uh, Banca's work. Anyone wants to explain these snippets of the, our mural? Well, I can tell, uh, first of all, let me just make, uh, mention that right now when you said about the store that it's in black and yellow, I was like, everything in Pittsburgh was my impression that it's black and yellow. <laughs> uh, but now rethinking the, uh, you know, or, or thinking about when when I got there, one of the things that I was most impressed is like here at the border, we have, you know, a few bridges, uh, whether it be for cars or for the train or for trailers. But then when I got to Pittsburgh, I was just amazed of how many bridges there are. But yet, uh, you know, listening to uh, to different people and conversations just, uh, also learning that even though there's all those connections, yet it sometimes feels disconnected. And I think, uh, and I'm glad that uh, that person interpreted, like Leah said, uh, those strings where, you know, there are those connections, physical connections, uh, but they can be also symbolic uh, as for the meaning where uh, we try to hold on to things, but sometimes they're just so fragile. Uh, and so we really have to take care of them and so uh, the mural itself is like four panels and, and it separates and it's almost like, you know, those strings are visually, you know, what's holding the, the mural from panel to panel. Uh, and aside from that, uh, there was also, as you can see, there's text within it. Um, so talking to the people that participated, uh, we asked them what would be something that would bring the Latin uh, or Spanish language but in a way where also English speakers could understand. It's like, what is something that everybody can relate, whether it, you, know, you speak only English, but you understand. And someone mentions like, oh, I remember when I first got here, even though I didn't know how to speak English that much, uh, he said one of the main things, like a welcoming uh, phrase would be like, hey, what's up, amigo? And so it's like, okay, that's perfect. And that's how we, Add or why we added, as you can see there, kind of like where the license plate would be. There's this like, what's up, amigo? Uh, another phrase here that we can see it's uh, pronounced mandame money. Uh, so it's kind of like English and Spanish and it just means like send me money, uh, which is one of the things that we talked about how a lot of uh, people that, you know, might be here working, help their still their families in, in, in other countries. Uh, on the right hand side, we have on our, that computer, uh, si se puede, which means yes, we can. And so, um, so it's kind of like, I don't know, a, a phrase of encouragement. It's like, yes, we can. Come on, let's do it. And, and, and we did it. <laughs> yeah, if I, I can jump, here, jump in here. So going back to what uh, Jill was saying before about the idea of carrying things. And I think like today, very few people or maybe no one actually lives in the same house where they were born. So we all have the experience of moving, doesn't matter how far, but we can, we always have to decide what to bring with us and what to leave behind. And like this was like a visualization of that, but I think we can all relate somehow on, to this process of thinking what's uh, the essence of our identity and like what comes with us and then what we have to like eventually leave behind or like do a big effort to to keep coming like bringing it with us no matter where we go and also how things how we add things to our carts no when we are coming to different places and how that also shifts the order of things in our in our own identity 
Yeah, I also remember, I just want to say that, for example, the Manda Memoni is in the font of Western Union. And we decided to keep that font because of, yeah, like how important remittances are for this connection between the US and the rest of the Americas. There is also a wink to um, Andy Warhol's uh, Brillo piece here. And we there is also some iron here to to talk well to to make to wink to Pittsburgh and uh, and also this card here uh, the one with the cactus and the computer on top was designed by one uh, young undergrad uh, I think she's from Laredo and she was so excited because she moved recently to Pittsburgh I think it was her first semester here at, uh, at Pitt and in Pittsburgh and then she saw a flyer somewhere and she got excited because she knew Gil. It's like, I know Gil, I know Gil, can I join? And since the very first moment she was uh, all uh, into the project and she wrote an email to, uh, to me uh, uh, saying that she has seen a post that Marisol has made, I don't know where, Instagram maybe, or, uh, and she was super excited. She's like, I cannot go because I have class at that time. But well, and she draw this little card with a cactus and on top of computer and et cetera. And she said that she wanted to show how there is a, a connection of knowledge. Like we immigrants come with knowledge too. It's not that we only come here to get knowledge, but we have a bunch of knowledge and that knowledge with the knowledge that exists here becomes in something else. Uh, and that I think was a uh, super beautiful and inspiring. Uh, we made mistakes too. You see this uh, bookshelf. We wanted to bring and speak about like Latin American literature that has been important to a world. Uh, world and uh, and in the process, we put only male authors. Uh, and I think that was Saturday. And on Sunday, we realized about our big mistakes. So we added later in the bookshelf, uh, kind of in a punky way, like uh, names of female authors too. So it is. it was a reflexive process too. Uh, uh, and that was, I think that's important to mention. Um, but we can, can talk add, more about the mural. Yeah, sorry. Can I just add one more course, thing yeah. on this one is um, about the cart on the right that uh, that red piece that's so prominent is uh, kind of, it's a stethoscope. So her idea with that was like, kind of like checking in are you doing okay? You know, you're you're on this journey, and um, the idea that you and you want to check on yourself, and uh, it's kind of like the symbol of that. It's checking mm -hmm. on your your heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is this other piece that appear in the mural. And when you see, when we get back to the pan, like the panoramic view of the mural is on the right side and is, is this little snail, like kind of lonely, which is pulling the other, uh, the other cards, right? Uh, and this uh, was the card that the, um, our uh, most, expert a muralist from Pittsburgh uh, design, which is Max, which I hope is in is somewhere here. I, I think I heard he was going to come uh, as part of the public. But when when he said it, like he, he said that he usually in his work uh, makes a little snail in, in uh, which has this capucha or this mask to, to honor the Zapatista revolution, which has been like, probably one of the most important uh, and contemporary revolutions that the America has had. Uh, and is there is that little snail resisting and slowly but constantly pulling all these like migration full of dreams and encounters and other stuff. And it is also um, a metaphor of how this project is uh, pushing other projects. And at the same time, so I'll, we, we were um, we, we had the chance to learn from previous projects that other friends and colleagues did here related to the Latinx community. And we wish that this could continue also inspire other people and other projects. And one example uh, that is coming this semester 
Uh, it's uh, Diseño Juntos, uh, Juntos or Design Together. It's uh, an initiative that um, Jorge uh, Jimenez, who was one of the participants of, the, of this uh, mural workshop, uh, started to develop and I joined him and we're starting to work with, um, with the Latinx youth here in Pittsburgh via Casa de Jose, doing a, a joint program about uh, art history, design and engineering uh, in which we can co like help contributing with the students um, with new knowledge, but also learning from them and learning about their own um, experience of being um, here in Pittsburgh. And also hopefully that the university can also connect uh, more strongly with, with the Latinx community here in Pittsburgh. Hopefully this will happen during the semester. I will give you more information later on. Someone is asking, uh, let me see, Patricia, Isabel, how is the work of getting the Latin, or are we getting into the questions? Let me just ask it. <laughs> ya me adelante. Uh, cool. Are you all, I mean, have you covered everything you want to cover? <laughs> have we? I think so. Uh, I think well, so. Let, me, let me just say, state one more thing about the mural and the process of, I think hopefully this continues and, you know, not just the, the this mural in particular, but the idea of, of working as a community, because uh, again, it was a learning process that was sharing our ideas, but also uh, the, well, in the learning process, like I said, technically there were people that didn't have that much experience. And so they got to, I got to teach uh, them basic things like mixing paint and, you know, and different things, even for you know, artists that uh, might have had a little bit of experience just to think uh, outside of the technique, maybe now in concept of how to develop ideas. And, and they get they got to see like the whole thing from the idea to the final uh, version of, of the mural. So I think that's very important as, as a learning experience for the community because they hopefully uh, they can appreciate and they can talk to their friends and you know, and it's a nice breaker. It's like, oh, I, I participated in this thing and you know, maybe you should join us and together we can do even more. Thank you. So I mean, this has been so rich and I wanna thank the panelists for sharing um, the process and some of the outcomes and really exploring with us the way that public art as a community process uh, doesn't just yield a, a gorgeous mural, but new connections that can then mobilize all kinds of projects and networks that go across time and space and location. So I think that's really powerful. Um, I see that we do have one question. I just want to ask one question to bring us back to some of the connections we talked about we had a pre-meeting last week um, about the aesthetic of the mural. And you've talked a lot about its multiple meanings, but one of the things that was really powerful for me is how vibrant it is and how playful it is, even though it's dealing with these deep themes of fragility and home and holding on to home and all, all, all these challenges that come with migration. And, and we talked about last week, um, some of the distinctions between this mural and the way that migration is represented in a couple of the panels of the Vanka murals that are treating really heavy themes. And so I'm thinking specifically of the panel where it talks about Croatian mothers give their sons to industry. And it's talking about the way that unsafe working conditions result in the loss of life of many workers, particularly um, recently arrived ethnic minorities for that time. Um, so if you all could talk a little bit about how you're thinking about um, this, the aesthetic and um, treating heavy subject matter with kind of a light touch, a playful touch. Uh, I definitely, I think Gil should say a few words about this too, but I know that that was something we spoke about um, early on, kind of the, the idea that with that type of mood that in some ways you can bring in more people um, to a conversation by kind of leading with uh, lightness and a little bit of humor um, for starting a conversation. Well, and also, uh, I mean, I guess adding to it, coming from the, you know, from a Mexican culture, uh, you know, even like the Day of the Dead, it's something that, you know, we, we're, we celebrate and it's a very colorful 
uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, a uh, way to pay respect to, you know, those who have passed. And uh, I think just in general, maybe, maybe it has to do with the way uh, that we kind of build things uh, when something breaks and uh, we're not, uh, you know, uh, doing economically well, we tend to patch it up or make the best to fix something. Uh, and so eventually, like just going back from a personal experience, uh, and this is, I'm talking about my grandmother when I was a kid, a little backstory. Um, I remember that they were building a, a small room. And so it was with things that they had. And so it kind of looked patched up, but it kind of like covered in a way, uh, color in a way served as like if it was brighter than it was and made her have made the, the place happier than it actually was. Uh, and so I think that's how uh, kind of color works with with me, like in, in like in this case, uh, building something where it's not so spectacular, uh, but yet color makes it. Uh, dealing with death, it's not something to that we want to think about. I mean, it's just as hard, uh, you know, as any other culture, but yet uh, with flowers and with things, we kind of uh, try to deal with it. And so, I mean, and I was telling you guys like last week, uh, and that just continues, I guess, from generation to generation. And like, I'm at my parents' house right now. Uh, and so this is the wall in the living room and you can just see <laughs> like how bright it is. And I've talked to my mom and she's like, it's my wall. I like that color, it's staying. And so I think eventually, you know, when dealing with, uh, with murals or dealing with other things, it's just something that, that I, I don't know, like it's already innate and, and it helps to deal with, with bigger issues. Uh, not that you're trying to patch it up or, or decorate it to disregard what is really there, but in, it totally the opposite. It tracks your attention. Once you're there, you're like, wait a minute, this is, you know, this is colorful, but yet it's deeper than just the aesthetics. Yes, and I think also something very different from the Vanka murals that we have here is that they're not human figures. And like the presence of human figures uh, can make the the person viewing the, the, the murals uh, relate uh, in a different way that we couldn't because we didn't have the, um, any humans there because of, of time that we couldn't really include these images or other decisions. But through color, I think that people can also relate to, to different emotions and different um, feelings in general. So I think that we balance it, like we, we couldn't really have that, um, figurative element of, of humans, but uh, we can just put other objects and things that will make you like think about your own experience of, of objects or of, of colors in general. And I think adding to the mural, I mean, sorry, to the, to the human aspect, I think now with, uh, I guess with, uh, with social media, I mean, uh, I think in a way this mural also becomes like Instagrammable where uh, I could already see people, you know, pretending to be pushing the cart and take a picture of me, you know what I mean? And so they become now part of the work. They become the human. That's great on a lot of levels because it also facilitates the continued circulation of a mural about migration through different social media networks. It's very meta, I love that. Camila, did you want to add on that? No, I just wanted to say that when we were imagining this project with since the beginning, uh, I think in my head, but this is in my own head, it was going to be red and black, right? Like I've seen all this political art in Bogota where I'm from. And when Gil sent the materials and I went to pick up uh, the paints and I saw the colors, I, I was a little bit surprised. It's like, where are we going with this mural, right? Uh, but I totally agree. Like. Yeah, Gil convinced me and I, I, I love the mural, how it looks now. And I think somehow it makes it, yeah, like it might like invite other people that the black and red would not probably. 
And especially in Pittsburgh's um, climate, which is so often gray. That and too. Kind of dreary. So it's it's a kind of brightening. Yeah, great. Well, okay, it looks like we have plenty of time um, to discuss. So there, there are a couple of questions from Sydney in the q and I don't know if you all can see those. I think you can, because um, I think Gil was reading a couple of them, but they're about the reception of the mural at the library programs around youth responding to the mural and connections that have been made, um, and then ideas about future collaboration. And then if the library has shared feedback, that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. mm, well, the 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 I'm, I can speak a little bit about the library, and then uh, I think well, Marisol and Leah we are well involved in this like um, process. Uh, at the beginning, we were not sure if we wanted the the mural to be in the library because the mural was kind of designed to be in a public space, and I think at the end we wanted to be in a public street in Pittsburgh. We don't want it to be like enclosed in a in a. I mean, the Hillman is public, but it still has all these like uh, doors and uh, filters for people to to get uh, in. But uh, but then like we thought that temporarily it would be very interesting to have it there, and we agreed. Uh, the thing is that all this has happened in well well uh, the pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, and I think it has been in the library for a month or less. Uh, so we we haven't had the chances. To, to see the reactions of the people who learned or to even give, have a talk uh, about the mural in, in the context of the library. So I don't know much about the, the, the reactions, but I don't know if other people from the team has heard um, about some reactions or, yeah. I, I haven't, but I wanted to address a question I saw uh, about the, um, opening of the library. So like currently still it's only open for students and that's one of the reasons why it's the, sad, sadly we don't have it in a more like open uh, public space. But at the same time, I think the, the, the fact that it's like a movable mural gives it a lot of chances to, to continue living somewhere else. So we believe that um, after the situation changes, we don't know how it's gonna change, but we can always find another place to show it and the, mo the mobility of the mural also speaks about like the mobility of the topic, you know? So people are like coming here to Pittsburgh, but also inside Pittsburgh, like we are continually moving and the Latinx community also, it's a spread around the city. It's not specifically located in one area. And we wish that this mural could be displayed in different spaces and so maybe we we're thinking first outside in in the, in, the, in the campus around Oakland, and then somewhere else. And this is like continuous. It's like it has. I mean, it's the the project didn't end when the didn't end with the with the workshop. It was just the beginning, I guess, to to see how this can continue being um, shown around and and continue pr uh, promoting the the presence of uh, Latinx people here in Pittsburgh. Can you all speak a little bit about, um, you've spoken now about some of the, the opportunities of the mobile mural as a form. Uh, what are some of the challenges of using a mobile mural? And Eve, you mentioned COVID as one example and Hillman not being fully public, but what are some other things that you all have had to grapple with? Well, one thing is since we haven't found um, a permanent wall that will host uh, the mural. And I think that there is a question from Patricia there that how is that work going? We have only one offer from this restaurant Casa Brasil that would like to host the mural for a long time in the one of their like uh, exteriors uh, walls. Uh, but one of the things is like, uh, it's time consuming and resource consuming to think how to move it, right? And where are we gonna move it next? Uh, it's not that easy. So that's what, like, if we would have done it like on a wall, for example, we could like forget about all this, like, uh, it's work. 
uh, I think that's probably a, uh, one thing that is not pretty easy, but, but I don't know what, I, I, I think that's the only kind of issue. I really like that it, it can move. I, I, and I, I, think, I, that's, I, I think that's very poetic. Mm -hmm. Just that, you know, that this mural can't find a home, but yet, you know, it has a lot <laughs> to offer. <laughs> it's a wandering, it's a wandering yes. mural. <laughs> well, I don't want to um, cut the hopes, but <laughs> I do want to say that to bringing the historical perspective, and that's what I do for my research, it is very interesting to see the, um, the lives of new bubble murals that have been done like throughout the 20th century especially the murals from Mexican artists and how that is very different from when you do a mural directly on the wall. So actually some even people like consider, I mean, put into question, is this a mural if it's not on a wall? But the fact is that it has inherited a lot of um, references and like practices that are, that were created in this context of like muralism in Latin America. And I think it's uh, important to consider like the, experiences of the past and think like how that move out mobility could also lend, lead into like oblivion or like forgot like forgetting where he was or where he was put so trying to find also a, a place to more permanent could be a way to safeguard the, this mural and, and, and its memory. Yeah, and I think what Patricia Patricia Document is asking in the Q and A, what, what about a community center or a Casa San Jose, for example? Actually, and I was thinking this is one advantage of the uh, mural being uh, mobile is that it has gained kind of a CV, right? It has been in these places now. It's at Hillman, so it is probably becoming more sexy now for uh, an organization to to host it or to, to adopt it. I think at the beginning, uh, we talked with Casa San Jose about the possibility, but they were a little bit concerned about the space because there was not a mu like a wall in Casa San Jose that could, uh, um, like, that could fit the mural, which is quite big. We haven't talked about it. It is eight by 20 uh, feet, right? I'm terrible at this, uh, uh, yeah. What, or it's not meters, I get confused. But yeah, so it's, it is a big mural. Um, so that was, but yeah, I think we need to to offer it to, to Casa San Jose maybe. I think it would be ideal. And also it would be ideal because Casa San Jose or one of the uh, uh, offices of Casa San Jose is located in Beachview, which I believe is becoming the Barrio Latino of Pittsburgh. So it would make even more sense for that mural to be there. Okay, there is a question about downtown Pittsburgh as a location with display windows from the department stores. Um, are there thoughts about that? I haven't thought about it, but we have architects in our team. I, I mean, I think originally before when we were looking for a more permanent spot, that would have been uh, dreamy. I mean, before we got into these these movable panels, we were emailing people like, "Hey, can we do a mural on your wall?" <laughs> kind of questions like that. But um, but yeah, now that it's in this mobile form and and with things that you're saying about it being for the community, um, it does seem now like it might be more appropriate to have in one of the other neighborhoods besides downtown, um, more in a residential kind of like area um yeah and the the nature of downtown is also changing with the pandemic so we'll see yeah and going back to a question about the pandemic that carolina has posted and uh, i think well I've, I've talked a little bit about the mural itself but when the pandemic has started the the network of the people that participate in the in the pandemic uh, allow um, the the partner of the part of one of the participants uh, lost her job and she decided to sell tamales in order to survive for a few months and that network uh, of the mural like we were buying tamales uh, every month 
we organized a list of people who wanted to buy tamales from this person. And I would go with a friend and pick them up and then deliver. So it was, it, for a little bit, it was kind of a, a network of support uh, to, to, to this person. And, and it was a delight to, to have these tamales. So. Uh, Ken is asking, uh, let me see, let me go back. Uh, does anyone want to discuss the attitude expressed in the central panel above the piano key? Do you want to talk about it, Camilo or Marisol? I can start and then Camilo can continue. <laughs> so sure. I, I think, um, so what Camilo was saying that during all these events, we are always including food as part of the events, but we were also including music. I think we were always playing music. We were always like trying to dance or like bring some um, interaction uh, through different uh, senses, you know, it was only, not only visual, not only painting. So um, I think also through this uh, process of um, like the, of deciding what we were like uh, proud of, uh, of as Latinx to bring to Pittsburgh, to bring to different parts um, I think the idea of like our music was central and how it's like, it's a very good music. It's a music that really invites people to join and to celebrate. And that's, I think that's the origin of, of the centrality of those words. Yeah, and I can add that it was designed by Dulce, which is a Mexican woman and artist who participated in the project. And some people actually, I have, heard if like chingona is a bad word, but I think in this case, it's like a, a, a word of like power and like, um, and yeah. So, uh, and, and yeah, and I want to, to mention that Dulce was the designer of, of, that, of that card. Isn't it also kind of like, a, it's like a term of endearment in a way? Yeah, Feel it's like, a, like if, if you're like, powerful, like you said. Uh, so, I mean, chiquitos, like small chingona is huge. So in this case, like are huge, but more than that, like, you know, our great music, I'll just leave it. <laughs> but it's with an attitude. Yeah, definitely. Looks like Rebecca has a pretty detailed question. Um, so asking uh, about the Vanka murals, one was created in 1937, another in 1941. Between those years, major changes occurred in the politics of Croatia and the US, including the rise of fascism. As you're thinking about the future of this project and its spinoffs, she's wondering if returning to this mural project in several years has an appeal to consider how the many issues and experiences of migration the mural considers have or have not changed? Very good question. I mean, I can start a, uh, yeah, I think definitely like uh, uh, as, as we uh, said a little bit in the beginning, the, the seed of this project was political, right? Like uh, Trump came with this rhetoric of like expanding and making this, uh, Mexico US wall uh, larger and also like expanded in so many ways, right? Like uh, emboldening eyes to do more of like their job and all this like hate rhetoric coming into uh, the picture. So yeah, in a way it was a way to respond to that. And I think, and I hope that if we look at it in, in a decade, we can see it as a, as a, as, a, as a response to, to those uh, uh, politics of hate. I would add to that too. I think um, over the course of this project and also um, some of my, my other involvements with the other border wall projects and we've, I think we started being galvanized by the, the border wall efforts, but we've also started thinking a lot more about the borders in Pittsburgh, not just for Latinx immigrants, but for people within Pittsburgh. And um, 
So I think that that is another kind of extension. If there's if there are more iterations, we might think more about like how it is moving within Pittsburgh um, for for marginalized groups. So yeah, I think it would be pretty cool to see like what the 1941 version <laughs> is for for this mural. All right, it looks like there are a number of suggestions for potential locations, <laughs> including the lobby of PPG Place, um, Space Gallery downtown operated by the Cultural Trust. Um, and then, yeah, there's a question from Cindy about where we can follow the mural. Um, so I can I can drop the website in the chat for sure. Uh, and where we can learn about stories related to the mural. But are there other places and spaces where you are keeping the story of the mural alive, possibly maybe through podcasts or other conversations, interviews? Well, I was going to say there is an Instagram, but I have it has we haven't used it in a while. Um, <laughs> So maybe we can, maybe I can add that to some notes, some follow-up note. Um, and yes, the website, um, which I think was already linked in the event uh, details. So we're definitely gonna keep up that page as um, kind of the mural status. So that's, a, that's probably the most central resource. Yeah, I think there was a question about the tamales. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't want to share the the contact of the woman of the tamales right now. She found a job, and I think she told me that she was not doing tamales anymore. But <laughs> you could write to me. I can put my email, and then I can make the connection if this person <laughs> agrees. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, and we haven't talked about the the party aspect, but I guess that could be later. Um, also, uh, let's see, will be nice. Uh, you know, one of the things from the suggestions of the of the group, and you know, all these uh, you know different places that it could be, or the possibilities of like uh, following the mural. I think if this uh, the the project as an idea continues, uh, those are could be aspects that we can think about and consider. Or you guys as a group that you know we could have like interviews and stories where people uh, share personal. Uh, you know, uh, stories of like, why are they, you know, getting themselves involved in a project like this? You know, how is it important to them? You know, something, maybe short videos uh, that I think could add to the involvement as, as a community, aside from just the mural itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that kind of connects to Tina's question about plans to possibly expand the exposure of the mural beyond Pittsburgh. Um, so I don't know if there's more that you all want to say about um, that, about any desire to make a political statement and bring awareness of the project to a wider audience beyond the city. Mm, well, so far, I think the, the what we have done is to connect it with the other border wall project, which is uh, a project that Leah can talk more about, which has, so it's in direct dialogue with a very political a project that is has gained like a, a, a notorious advertisement in the US. Um, but I don't know, I, I think what I would like now is to find a place for it, like, but I don't know. And that, yeah. I really like the idea of creating more documentation about it and involving more like the people that participated originally in it or other people that can just sum into to the like non-stop creation of um, related to the to the mural and the, this idea of creating videos and like maybe that could like go beyond Pittsburgh but I also think that it's important to talk about the specific situation of Latinx in Pittsburgh which is very different than other places in in the U.S. and like letting other parts of the world know about this I think it's really important and also for the same like community here in Pittsburgh to understand that we, we can decide like what route to take, you know, so we don't have to do the same uh, or we don't have to repeat what has happened in other parts of the country. We can really be in charge as much as we can of the of, of 
who we are as um, in our how we are perceived or what are we doing as a community here in Pittsburgh. And there are some more suggestions of possible locations in the chat. Um, so Wilkinsburg and the partnerships through Center for Civic Arts. Um, so I'm taking notes and I'll, I'll send out these notes uh, of possible location options uh, at the end of this meeting. Um, and I think kind of your, your comment, Camilo, being like, I just want to, I do want to find a home for this thing, uh, connects to <laughs> Patricia's comment about you know, how to keep it moving and who takes care of it and how maybe are you trying or interested in building a team of stewards for the mural to take a little bit of the weight off your shoulders too? Because it is a lot of, we talked about heaviness and weight and how much you can carry. <laughs> and a project mm -hmm. like this is a lot of work. Um, so yeah, so what are your thoughts about team building and expanding uh, the network of folks to help keep this project alive? Well, I, I don't know, we haven't planned much about it, but I can certainly say that that grant, the, the project got through Marisol was like perfect to keep it alive for longer time and to, to move it and to have a really nice picture of it. That is like the picture that probably is gonna go through is, is being displayed at these web pages and et cetera. So definitely that bit of money like injected uh, the possibility to keep uh, keep the project alive, right? The invitation, this invitation is 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 also part of it. Uh, but uh, we haven't created a group yet that would like uh, uh, I don't know take care of it in the future. Uh, but I think part of the deal is like if we find a, a host for it and a home for it, that organization group person uh, has to take care of it. A little bit. Uh, I mean, to to the extent that it is possible, right? Eventually, it might get like I don't know, like destroyed by weather or people. I don't know. That's that's part of the life of murals too, right? Like it can be vandalized or, or like. But but yeah, that that's something that we have to 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 dialogue and to talk about later. Yeah. Uh, but, mm. Okay, um, yeah, looks like there's just a couple more suggestions of locations. So I have written those down and I'll share them with you. Yeah. Um, are there any other closing thoughts that you all want to share as we as we wind down? And also to our, our audience, we do have a few more minutes if you know you've been thinking of a question, but you have been worried about asking it. Now is your time. We have a little bit more time left. <laughs> Okay, so I'll phrase it this way. Um, maybe if you all just wanted to close with like one one hope that you have for the project going forward, it could be uh, kind of like as grandiose as you want or as um, sort of nuts and bolts granular as you want. Uh, I can say that, that I, I think the project is political and with these like expansions and moments that the project has seen as these conversations, uh, it has allowed me to see how political it is, right? And even though a mural cannot change uh, a radical policy and a structure of a structural inequality and etc., uh, it does, uh, I think, it helps to sparkle conversations that are crucial for uh, better futures. Uh, I would say just as um, that I hope that this kind of the dialogues that spin off from this continue to uh, inspire other projects like this. I think as an artist, I'm I'm struggling with um, how to be, uh, how to resist uh, things that happen that, you know, I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a journalist, I'm not a politician, um, but what I can do is um, things like this, bringing people together to create things um, that can spark 
conversations and, and also for that can allow people to meet that maybe wouldn't meet otherwise. Um, so I think just trying to demonstrate the value in, in that is what I wanna see. My hope is that the connections that were built during this project can keep alive and then connect to other individuals that we, we all like come to the, create a community. And, and then also in the same line of uh, inspiring others to work collaboratively and to don't think uh, ownership uh, of like um, projects that much uh, as individuals, but then thinking that just uh, summing forces and different characteristics of people, we actually can do way more than if we think uh, as individuals. Yeah, you guys said everything that I wanted to say but better. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, these connections. Uh, I mean, as the artists like Dia said, sometimes we create something and they stay you know, in the studio or we set them up in a wall and then that's it. But then now, you know, having a historian or having, you know, different people with uh, stronger uh, connections and different aspects other than, you know, just painting, uh, it's, help me grow. I mean, I, I see you guys and I get inspired by, you know, how much you've done and, and just taking this project, you know, it, I think about it as like, okay, that already happened. And then I get a call, hey, Gil, like now we're doing this. I was like, oh my God, it's still going. That's great. <laughs> and so uh, that's a big motivation. And, and hopefully, you know, those of you who are in the audience, if you're looking at this, uh, think about how you can take and, and you know, do your own mural and and hopefully you know if i can possibly you know i'll give you tips on you know uh, how i did or how we did it uh and it can just continue from pittsburgh to laredo to anywhere uh it, it is possible great and my hope is that we'll get to convene again in a year or two and talk about the next phase in the life of this project and have a party in person and eat some wonderful food and play some great music together. So um, I'm gonna ask Camila now to stop screen sharing so we could all be in the like weird Brady Bunch box together um, to close out the program. And I really wanna thank the panelists. This has been beautiful and inspiring and I love this project so much. This is like one of the best parts of Pittsburgh and I missed the creation of the mural but I got to meet everyone afterwards and it was great. Um, and I wanna thank the audience for all of their generative suggestions. I mean, this is an example of the work of collective brainstorming that we can do to make public art happen, to be stewards of that art and to sort of foment ongoing conversations. So for those of you that are interested in the project, keep calling, keep following it on their website, um, stay in touch with uh, the Society to Preserve the Millville Murals of Max Ivanka. They're gonna keep you updated with events. You can follow Hiccup at our website and on Facebook, and I'll drop that in the chat. Um, and I just want to thank all of you, and I'm going to turn it back over to, to Anna now. Thank you. And um, can you hear me? Because I don't know if that I'm, I can't get my video to turn back on. So um, that's probably a good thing. But um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. This was great. This, um, this was the first, and I hope just the first um, of many collaborations to come and, and more conversations and, and working together. We're, we really uh, are grateful to you for participating tonight and really excited to have the audience that we had. Um, so big, big cheers and thanks very much for, um, for the mural and for sharing the experience with us. And um, just a quick note, um, as uh, Caitlin said, you know, we'll we'll be back in touch with you soon about the upcoming programs in February and March. So we hope to see people back here again to continue the conversation.